Whitehall, one, two, one, two. This is Scotland Yard. For the first time in history, Scotland Yard opens its official files to bring you the authentic, true stories of some of its most baffling cases. These are the true stories, the plain, unvarnished facts, just as they occurred, reenacted for you by an all-British cast. Only the names of the participants have, for obvious reasons, been changed. The stories are presented with the full cooperation of Scotland Yard. Research on Whitehall 1212 comes from Percy Hoskins, chief crime reporter of the London Daily Express. The stories for radio are written and directed by Willis Cooper. Here is the man in charge of Scotland Yard's famous Black Museum, Chief Superintendent John Davidson, to brief you on case number 504-MR-701. Good afternoon. All the exhibits I have charge of here at the Black Museum are not in themselves horrible or gruesome. I admit that several of the exhibits in this case, number 504-701, are so dreadful that we reserve them for the use and study of our own people exclusively. Policemen are notoriously a strong stomach lock. But this one that I brought with me is not such a one. Look at it. It's a woman's earring. The pair couldn't have cost a great deal. Handmade, I think, by some village jeweler in France many years ago. Can you make out the design? Trudely carved representation of a left hand holding a heart and what seems to be a flower. The other one of the pair was similar, I'm told, by those who've seen it, except that it was a right hand. This is the only one left of a pair. Retired Chief Superintendent Cedric Pickard is a little older today than he was then. Hey, Cedric? I was a brand new inspector then, John. You still remember all the details of this case, though. For 35 years, I've been trying to forget them, John. On the 31st of October, 1917, the Zeppelins raided London for the next to last time. About eight o'clock on the morning of November the 2nd, some 32 hours after the air raid, I received a call from E Division of the Metropolitan Police in Bow Street. I hastened there at once. They had four things to show me. One, a badly bloodstained sheet. Two, a large jute bag labeled Argentine La Plata Cold Storage. Three, a stout cord which had been tied round the bag. Four, a torn bit of pasteboard on which was scrawled in pencil the words Bloody Belgium. Most curiously misspelled. There was a civilian there, too, a squatty man with a cast in his left eye, wearing a remarkably dirty cap. He stood up when I looked at him. Oh, I'm Sa- Sammy Elwood, sir. I found it. The them things I mean. Oh, did you then? Roadman, I am, sir. I work at Regent Square in Bloomsbury. Where'd you find this? In the central garden in the square, sir, behind the railing. I seen it when I first come to work this morning, sir, but I went to have breakfast first, sir. Good thing I did, too, and... Then I untied the bag when I come back. I run for a policeman right away, sir. Why? Why did you run for a policeman? The bag, sir. There was a lady in it. The lady, rather the remains of the lady, for she was lacking her head and hands, had been taken to the mortuary. Sam the roadman obviously knew nothing about it except what he discovered when he untied the bag marked cold storage. He went back to work, a faint green tinge still underlying the grime on his face and hands. I examined the evidence. The pasteboard on which was written Bloody Belgium, I hazarded, might indicate that someone 
who disliked bloody Belgians, had caused the death of this one. The bag, I decided, should go to the laboratory for examination. I looked for laundry marks on the bloodstained sheet. There was one down, down in one corner. I telephoned it in to the criminal records office and started for my office at New Scotland Yard. The telephone was ringing as I came in. Yes? Inspector Picard here. The Sergeant Toland here, sir. We found out about that laundry mark, sir, the one you phoned in. Good. It belongs to a Mademoiselle Albertine de Rocher. Belgian? I don't know, sir. Address, 50 Munster Square. Uh, that's over east of Regent's Park, sir. Well, that's very good, Sergeant. I'll run over there at once. Um, care to come along with me? Why, if I can get permission to leave here, sir. Get your hat. I'll take care of that. Accompanied by Sergeant Monty Toland, he was a much better man on a case than on a CRO telephone, and they knew it. I proceeded to Munster Square, and we were admitted to Mademoiselle de Roche's two-room flat by the landlady, an old French woman with a moustache. Bed's all torn up. Oh. Sheet seems to be missing. No sheet here. Look under the bed. One... Three pairs of shoes. No sheets under here. What are you looking at, sir? Is that blood? There on the pillow. It looks like it. And and here, sir, on the blanket. A lot of it. I wonder. Sir, there's somebody at the door. Landlady. I can speak a sort of French, sir. Hello, madame. Entrez. <laughs> Hello. Come on in, the keyhole's drafty. Pardon? Come in. Oh. Uh, ask her if she knows where Mademoiselle de Rocher is. Uh, Mademoiselle de Rocher... She uh, is d- gone. She speaks English. Oh, oui. Where's she gone to? Je ne comprends pas. Où est-elle? Oh, uh, she is gone since uh, Saturday. Saturday. Oui, oh, she go for to see her sister in... Uh... Nottingham? Nottingham. Oui, oui, Nottingham. Hmm. What's her sister's name? Ça, je comprends pas. Uh, comment elle s'appelle la sœur? Je sais pas. She doesn't know, sir. She, uh, she go away to uh, hide in the abri when the Bosch come in the air raid. Underground, in the tubes, you savez? Elle ne revient pas. Nottingham. Tu compris? What time does she leave? Uh, à quelle heure uh, tu parti? Uh, Presque minuit. Uh, near midnight. Samedi. Saturday, yes, yes, yes. She didn't come back, huh? No. Nottingham. Nottingham. Uh-huh, oui. Ask her who might know her sister's name in Nottingham. Uh, madame... Uh, Il qui... ne sait. Cet homme-là, là-bas. Uh, what man, madame? Uh, 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 quel... The man in the picture there? Oui, oui, oui. Ça, c'est Langlois. Son, son bon ami. Langlois, il sait. It's Langlois, her... Uh... Sweetheart, he might know, she says. Where is he? Je sais pas. Chez lui. Where is his home? Huh? Oh, Charlotte Street, numéro 101. 101. 101. Langlois, Etienne Pierre, Petite Boucherie. Rue Charlotte, numéro 101. What she say? She says his name's Langlois and he lives at 101 Charlotte Street. I know that. What else did she say? She says he has a small butcher shop there. The butcher Langlois was not there in his combination living quarters and shop in the basement of 101 Charlotte Street when Toland and I arrived. The heavy door was strongly barred and locked. Toland spoke to an attractive French woman who seemed to be the charwoman. At least she was armed with broom and pail, obviously recently used. Uh, pardon, mademoiselle, monsieur Langlois est-il ici? No, monsieur, il est en train de livrer ses viandes. Je ne sais pas quand il sera de retour. Oh. Non, non, vous ne pouvez pas entrer. J'ai tout enfermé quand j'ai fini de nettoyer. Quelle saleté. C'est que l'anglois a égorgé un veau samedi soir. Oh, le sang était tout partout. À présent, il fait ses ventes. Je regrette, mais je ne sais pas quand il sera de retour. What she say? She says he's gone. Oui, monsieur. 
Who's she? Je suis Françoise Grimard. Mademoiselle Françoise Grimard. C'est moi la fiancée d'Étienne Langlois. What she say? She's the sweetheart of Langlois, she says. How many sweethearts has this fellow got? Oh, I don't think we'd better ask her that, sir. Mais qu'est-ce que vous dites, voyons? What she say? She wants to know what we're talking about. Madam. Mademoiselle. Uh, um, uh, you tell her, tell her. Dommage que je le raté. Je vous remercie, mademoiselle. Come on, sir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. À la bonne heure, messieurs. Goodbye, madam. Mademoiselle. Oh, quite. <clears throat> Wonder how much she knows about this affair. Said she was Langlois' sweetheart, didn't she? That isn't all she said, sir. Uh, I gathered that. Said Langlois had butchered a calf in there Saturday night. She did? Uh, that's why she had to clean up the place. I hope she didn't clean it up too well. Why, sir? I'd like a sample of that blood. I don't understand you, sir. I want to see if it's really animal blood, my boy. I posted two detectives at the Charlotte Street location to keep a close but inconspicuous watch on the home butcher shop of Etienne Pierre Langlois to report the butcher's return. Toland and I went back to the Munster Square address where Albertine de Rocher had lived. The moustached landlady assured us she knew nothing more of the affairs of Mademoiselle de Rocher. She did, however, add that Monsieur Langlois had put in an appearance there after the de Rocher woman had left. Ask her when, Tolan, I said. Quel jour, madame? Dimanche. Sunday. What did he want, madame? He had uh, food for the cat. Mademoiselle du Rocher asked him to do so. Was he alone? Huh? A tail cell? Oui. How long was he here? Quinze uh, minutes, peut-être. No, Fifteen minutes. I know. He fed the cat? Comment? The cat. The cat. Uh, the, the, did he feed the cat? Eat, eat. No. Why? That's what he was here for, wasn't it? The chat is perdu. The, the cat's what? Perdu, perdu. He is run away. Well, what did he do with the cat food? Oh, he take it away with him. Why didn't he leave it here? Je ne sais pas. Hmm. Was he here alone in this room all that time? Oui. Did he take anything from here when he left? The food for the cat. Uh, that all? Je ne pas. I don't know. You sure? Monsieur, if he takes something from this flat, it is hers, not mine. Comprenez? I don't know. Or see, he is her sweetheart, you say, n'est-ce pas? It is all right if he takes something. I don't know. Not my business. A sheet seems to be missing from the bed. Uh. I don't know. Je ne sais pas absolument. I see. Well, that's that. Seems to be, sir. Well, thank you, madam. Goodbye. Goodbye, monsieur. Oh, I, I knew there was something else I wanted to ask you. Oui, monsieur. Do you know a woman named, uh... uh what's her name, Tom? Who, sir? The woman who told us about Langlois. Oh. Françoise Grimard. Ah. Know her? No. No, I have never heard of her. Nowhere in all London is the art of thrusting one's nose into other people's business at lower ebb than in Soho, with its enormous foreign population. Our uncooperative landlady was a conspicuous practitioner of the ancient injunction, live and let live. As Toland and I approached 101 Charlotte Street, half a mile away, Detective Sergeant John Mullins, one of the men I'd posted to watch the Langlois establishment, called to me. Hey, Inspector. Who's that? Oh, oh, it's you, Mullins. Yes, sir. Been looking for you, sir. You went to your office at the yard and I... What's up? He's come back, sir. Langlois? Must be him, sir. He looks like a bloody butcher. He came up and unlocked the door of the place and went inside. He's still there? Must be. We haven't seen him come out. Good. The woman came up and knocked at the door, sir, about ten minutes ago and was admitted by him. Young? Well, not so young, Sergeant, but very handsome, I'd say. What'd she say? We couldn't hear, sir, but she's there now. 
least she hasn't come out either. She's telling him all about the two policemen who were asking questions about him this morning. I'll take my oath. Mademoiselle Francoise Grimard. They had been sharing a bottle of villainous looking vin rouge. The kind of French soldiers call Pinard. Pinard. That's right. It is said to dissolve the teeth of taken in quantity by an amateur. Neither Langlois nor Mademoiselle Grimard were amateurs, apparently. They looked at us a trifle owlishly, however. We gratefully declined a drink. Langlois swill peanut. What do you want, policeman? Pongar Etienne. What'd she say? Be careful what you say, sir. What? That's what she said, sir. Oh. What do you want? We'd like to ask you a few questions, Monsieur Langlois. Hmm. Ask them. <laughs> I do not guarantee to answer. Qu'est-ce que tu dis, Etienne? Je dis que je ne promets rien. <laughs> Mademoiselle Grimard told us that she cleaned your place out. Oh, yeah. She did not clean it well enough, I'm afraid. Oh, fiche-moi le camp. It is still dirty, François. Si, au moins, tu faisais plus attention quand tu égorges tes bêtes. Uh, what did she say? Uh, she says I should be more careful when I butcher. C'est vrai, Françoise. Huh? You do your butchering in here? Oh, sometimes, monsieur. <laughs> Mais écoute. Et toi, Françoise. This blood on the walls here, on the floor... It's animal blood, then. Hmm. From the calf I slaughtered. Would you mind if I take a small sample of it? Qu'est-ce qu'il dit? Il veut du sang. Ah, mm. Pourquoi pas? Yeah, why not, monsieur? You will find it is calf's blood. N'est-ce pas, Francoise? Bien sûr. <laughs> Allons, monsieur, take what you like. If you please, Dolan. Yes, sir. Just scrape some of those stains, sir. You take this envelope. Yes, sir. And label it. Thank you. Now, if you'll open the door and hand it to Mullins, ask him to hurry it back. If you don't mind, Monsieur Langlois. Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He's to take it to Sidney Belloc in the l laboratory and have him tested at once to see if it is animal blood. It is, monsieur. And rush me a report here at once. I'll wait. Yes, sir. Thank you, Monsieur Langlois. Uh, but is that all you wish, monsieur? I should like to ask another question or two, if I may. Hello, monsieur. Pongar Etienne. Let me alone. Uh, monsieur. Now, you are not required to answer this question, monsieur Langlois. I know that. Ask it. You, uh, knew Mademoiselle Albertine du Rocher, Albertine did you Albertine du not? Rocher, la vache, cette salope. Hey, Françoise. Oh, Albertine du Rocher, alors oui, la connaissez, moi aussi. Mais tu étais... Elle qui voulait m'enlever, Étienne, cette cochonne de la rue. Je suis Françoise. Oh, elle ne reviendra plus ici, celle-là. Pourquoi c'est toi? Oh, essaye. Elle reviendra plus jamais Pourquoi ici. Pourquoi c'est toi? Ah. Ferme ta gueule. Eh, eh oui, il la connaissait, moi aussi. C'est toi, Françoise. Elle nous tracassera plus jamais, celle-là. I take it the lady did know her. She certainly did, sir. What did she say? Well... Albertine du Rocher. Uh, now, excuse me, monsieur. I think it is better you go from here. Uh, monsieur Langlois, I have several more questions I would I'm like. sorry, monsieur. I will not answer them. Well, you don't have to, of course. I am sure but... that you will see that the matter of Mademoiselle Albertine du Rocher is a very painful one for Mademoiselle Guillemard and myself... <laughs> François. Oh, alors. Alors, t'es toi, François. Oh, Albertine, you No, Non, monsieur. I have answered enough. I know the British law, too, monsieur. You may not enter my dwelling without a warrant if I wish you not to. Nor must I answer questions unless I so choose. You have no warrant. I choose not to answer any more of your questions. I ask you to go away from my house. Aha. The door, monsieur. A thwarted policeman is a sorry sight. We shamble down Charlotte Street in the general direction of Scotland Yard, and the small measure of self-respect we detained in our retreat to its sheltering walls was quickly stripped from us by Sergeant Mullins, who met us on the stairway to my office. 
I was just starting out to find you, sir. Yes, Sergeant. That sample of blood you sent me back with, sir. Yes? The laboratory says it's animal blood, sir, not human at all. <sighs> Toland and I went home. But a night of even troubled sleep helps. I found obtaining a search warrant not too difficult, and armed with it, Toland, Mullins, and I returned to Charlotte Street. Langlois greeted us with a tolerant smile, I think you'd call it, if you were a novelist. It was the blood of an animal, was it not, Inspector? Yes, yes, it was, Monsieur Langlois. Oh, you see. I did not lie to you, Nesbeth? I have brought a search warrant. Is there any other room or building on these premises which you use for slaughtering? May well tell me. We shall find it anyway. Uh, there is a small shed. Out this door, monsieur. But I have not used it for many months. Out this door, monsieur. Oui. Go ahead, Marlon. You know what you're looking for. Right, sir. Is there a basement here? It is used for storage. We'll have a look at it later. Tell him. Yes, sir. Have a good look round the other rooms first, Tolan. Yes, sir. Uh, monsieur, I assure you... Oh, on the second floor, Tolan. Just run round to Munster Square, will you? Uh, is that not where the Mademoiselle de Rocher lives, uh, monsieur? Just run round there, will you, and see what Tom Bennett's found out. Yes, sir. If his report isn't ready, wait for it. And come back here at once. Right, sir. Uh, may I ask, <clears throat> monsieur... There's a... What? pathologist over there with some portable laboratory equipment, monsieur. Mais je ne comprends pas. He's over there looking at some blood stains. Now, if you don't mind, I'll start in this room. Is this an abattoir too, monsieur? It is my kitchen. It was a most dingy kitchen. A most filthy kitchen. I inspected it carefully. Greasy saucepans. Well scrubbed butcher's knives. Moldy pails of rubbish, stinking half empty tins of decayed food, and under the ancient sink a pile of stained linen. The third item I picked up was a blood stained towel. Animal blood, too? I asked Langlois. Uh, he didn't reply. And then something fell out of the folds of the towel onto the floor. I picked it up. What's this, I asked. It is an earring. It belongs to Francoise, to Mademoiselle Grimard. An earring, I said. And dropped it into my pocket. Just ask her about that. Uh, I will give it to her, monsieur. Thank you. I'll just ask her to identify it when she comes in. Where is she, by the way? Oh, she... I don't know. We'll find out. Did you say this is animal blood on this towel, monsieur? Oh, from the calf which I slaughtered. Dear me, how did an earring ever get in here? She lost it. Saturday night? Whilst you were slaughtering the animal? Monsieur. Hey, Who's that? Me, sir. Sergeant Mullins. Oh, come in, Mullins. Did you find anything? These bags, sir. Jute bags. What's it say on them? Uh, you uh, read it, Langlois. Uh, uh, Argentine, La Plata, cold storage. <laughs> I have dozens of them. Curious. The same kind of sack the body was in. Well, let's keep them, Mullen. Now, who's that? Oh, here you are, sir. Bennett says the stains are animal blood, so he's certain. I wonder how animal blood got in Mademoiselle de Roche's room. I wonder. Monsieur, I must speak to you. Eh? Very well. Tolan, you and Mullins go down to the cellar and see what you can find. Got a torch? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Go along. Now, monsieur. Uh, wait, monsieur. There's nothing down there. Get along. Monsieur, I confess. Go on. I did not kill her. Oh? Hmm? I went to feed the cat. I found her, dead, in her room. She had been attacked. Oh, the blood. I'm reliably informed that that is animal blood, monsieur. I was frightened. The, the concierge, the, uh, the landlady, she knew I was there. She, I might be accused of murder. It is possible. I brought the body back here. 
That blood out there in the kitchen, that is human blood. Her blood. I put her in the sack, but I did not kill her. I did not, I tell you. And in the night, I got my horse and trap and I drove to Eden Square with the body and... Well, what did you do with the hands and the head? We found the head, sir. Oh, no! It's in a cask downstairs, sir, with the hands. Can't identify it, sir, but there's an earring in one ear... The other's been torn out. If we can find it... Who's that now? Come in. Good morning, Mademoiselle Grimaud. Qu'est-ce qui se passe ici? Et vous? On vous a mis à la porte hier. Et tiens, réponse, si veux-tu? Uh, Mademoiselle, do you recognize this earring? Oh, c'est à elle. C'est celui qui s'est accroché au torchon. What she say? She says it's the one that got caught in the towel, sir. Why, it's the same as the one... The one down in the cellar, sir. On l'a trouvé. Ils ont découvert sa tête. She says they found it. They found the head. Albertine. Oh, oh, oh. C'est lui qui l'a tué. Arrêtez-le. Ah, uh, sa soeur. She is the one. Ma soeur. No, no. She oh, murdered her. Oh, non, c'est lui. Ma soeur. Ma soeur. Ma soeur. Ma soeur. Stop it. 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 I arrest you on a charge of willful murder. Francoise Grimard. I arrest you for the willful murder of Albertine de Rocher. I warn you that anything you say will be taken down in writing and may be used in evidence. Uh. Come along, both of you. At the trial at Old Bailey, it was proved that Albertine de Roja, instead of going to the air raid shelter when the alarm was given, had instead gone to the home of her lover, Langlois, who was entertaining Francoise Guimard. A quarrel ensued, and the de Roja woman was struck on the head and killed. We found the murder weapon, a cleaver owned by Langlois. The only fingerprints on it were those of Francoise Guimard. Langlois had gone to the dead woman's flat in Munster Square the next night with a container of animal blood in an attempt to make good his hastily conceived story. Then, realizing he must do better than that, he resorted to the practice of his profession. His handwriting matched the bloody Belgium written on the pasteboard with the body. It was a joke, he said, to foil people. It didn't. Etienne Langlois and Francoise Guimard were hanged at Wandsworth Prison in May 1918. You have heard another in the series Whitehall 1212, compiled from the official files of Scotland Yard. Research is from Percy Hoskins of the London Daily Express. Among those heard in this reenactment of a celebrated case were Horace Brehm, Harvey Hayes, Lester Fletcher, Evan Thomas, John Durth, Patricia Courtley, and Elizabeth Eustace. The stories for radio on Whitehall 1212 are written and directed by Willis Cooper. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.